How usable are the rear seats in the tiny GR Yaris? Can you get child seats back there? Then me and my daughter are gonna take this out for a snowy drive and find out why a dad swapped his V12 Ferrari FF for a tiny Japanese hatchback. My name's Ben and welcome to Dad Cars. The mighty V12 Ferrari FF is an absolute dream for me personally and for the Dad Cars channel. And you heard me right, this car's owner swapped his Ferrari FF <laughs> for this 30 grand Japanese hatchback. You'll find out why by the end of this video and whether I think he was right to do so or not. Do you know it actually states on Toyota's website and I quote, Unlike most new cars, the GR Yaris hasn't been designed to turn heads. <laughs> well, that makes sense to me. If, Toyota, if you think that this isn't particularly good looking and all your other stuff is, let me tell you, all of that other stuff to me is absolutely gopping. I can't stand modern cars out of Japan. I think the fussy, futuristic styling is horrible. This looks awesome to me. So in Toyota's free sports car lineup, this is actually the baby. And the GR86 is another car that does appeal to me a lot much more so than that horrible rebadged Z4 that they put the legendary Supra name to. Oh, to me, that is a bigger miss for Toyota than Harry Kane's second penalty against France. Now, I'm sure most of you watching this know why this is such a special car, so I'll just go through this really quickly, but Toyota wanted to make a new rally car to compete at the World Rally Championship, and this is the production car that came out of that exercise. It has an all-new four-wheel drive system, a 1.6-litre three-cylinder turbocharged engine producing around 260 brake horsepower. What an achievement out of a free pot. It's capable of zero to 62 in around five and a half seconds, which is enough to rival many of the V8s I've featured on the Dadcast channel. It's under four metres long, and while all other modern hot hatches are in excess of a tonne and a half in weight, this thing only weighs 1,280 kilograms. You can sit one of these next to a Civic Type R, and it'll look like a border terrier standing next to an overfed Labrador. Okay, look, all that sounds great, but this car's tiny. If those rear seats aren't usable, it's no good for a dad car, is it? So let's have a look at the rear seats in a GI Yaris. So the driver's seat doesn't seem to pull forward when you pull that lever. So it does it on the passenger side, but not on that side. But you, no, I can still get in. I'm a big boy. Right. I am genuinely surprised at this because the leg room is great. That seat is in a driving position that I could use, a manual. And I've got loads of leg room here. Okay, my head is resting on the, uh, on the roof liner there. But these are very usable seats. Loads more space than in, the, say, the back of a DB9 or a 911 or a, a Mustang. These are great, and it's a flat bench as well. Fantastic. So let's see what child seats we can fit back here. First off, let's try an Isofix base. So obviously you've got two Isofix points on the two rear seats here. Right, but getting that in is very easy. Right, so this is something you face with two-door cars. You can't actually sort of swing that in very easily. So if the baby was in the seat, it might be a bit tricky. Yeah, see? So you probably have to put the seat in and then climb in and put the baby in once the seat's in there. So it's not necessarily ideal. But let's see if the driver's seat goes back. So yeah, I'm in the driver's seat. I am a bit compromised, a bit closer to the pedals than I'd like to be, but I could drive it safely like this. And obviously the preference is to have the rear facing baby seat behind the passenger. So it would work really well behind a passenger. If you absolutely had to have two babies in the back for some reason, you, can, you could do it. This here is a full-size folding booster seat with Isofix. So let's see how this fits in. I mean, that fits in there perfectly. Despite the ultra compact size of this car, this rear seat is so usable. It's a proper four seater, this. The owner of this car, this is their actual child seat, which is fantastic. I'll, I'll have to check this out and look into it because I reckon this could fit in the back of a lot of the cars that I do on the Dad Cars channel. So it's a five point harness Isofix child seat. And over here, you've got an Isofix booster seat. But just look how much space there is back here, absolutely fantastic. And what's more, I am almost certain you could get a free across Multimac in the back of a GR Yaris, incredible. And you can even turn off the passenger side airbag, which is really handy just for infrequent use with a rear facing baby seat. I've done it again. 
I've locked myself in the boot again. How did that happen? This one's a lot smaller than the Taycan. It does pass the that guy's boot test. I was just in there for however many minutes. Um, <laughs> I managed to fold the seat forward just enough because I had the uh, child seats in there, so I couldn't fold them all the way down. And uh, I climbed through. <laughs> Why do I keep doing this? Such an idiot. Let's go for a drive in the GH Yaris. Let's switch her on. Right, so foot on the clutch and the brake. <laughs> that sounds good. Now, one of the things that people complain about with the GI Yaris is the sound from the exhaust, but this has got a rather fruity exhaust on it, which sounds lovely actually, even just not idle. So, in addition to those wheels, which I actually think look lovely on this white fluorescent car, it's also got a short shift sort of gearbox on here as well, which feels lovely. Roads may be icy, drive with care. Wow. Well, Surely I'm driving the right car for it though, aren't I? Right, so the starting sequence, what I need to do is I need to put this into track because of these conditions today, that will have it as proper four wheel drive. So yeah, have it in track. We need to also take off this horrible lane assist. I hate lane assist. Um, and then I'm also gonna press the IMT button because I'm not going to pretend to be a heel and toe expert, especially when it's a car that I'm only driving for half an hour. So what's it like sitting in a GI Yaris then? I mean, on my channel I get Maseratis, Aston Martins, all sorts of posh stuff. So yeah, interior is, it's not like those cars, is it? But it, it's still nice, you know? The steering wheel feels nice. Um, I mean, it's, it's quite soft and squishy up on the dash there. And I mean, this car here has got some carbon fibre bits that have been added, which, um, you know, just sort of add to the feel of it all. And yeah, it does feel pretty nice, actually. The seating position, I like to sit really low down, as low as possible in a car. And this seating position feels like I'm sitting right on top of the car. My head is right here, right up here. I mean, you definitely couldn't get a helmet on in here if you're 5'11". Nice with that rev match. Right, it's very icy cold and greasy out there, but... <laughs> the exhaust on this sounds fantastic. This is fantastic. God, you know, I wouldn't be able to accelerate that fast in my Aston Martin today. I would be squirling all over the place. God, oh, this is brilliant. What a fun car. driving you're probably going to be about 30 33 miles per gallon which might not sound a lot from a little free pot that's, that's this small but you can get on a run you can get sort of into the 40s which is impressive but even if you're absolutely gunning it <laughs> you still get about 23 miles per gallon which is more than my Aston Martin can get going at 66 miles an hour on the motorway only get about 21. So when you look at it like that, capable of over 40, it's fantastic. And servicing costs as well, although the intervals are more frequent because of the nature of this car, they're pennies. I mean, a, a big service costs about 300 pounds. And a small service, regular service, about 150. It's nothing. And obviously you get a five year, five year Toyota warranty with this. And I think if you keep the servicing plan up, and that extends all the way up to 10 years. Right, the road over there looks in the sun and quite dry, so let's give this a little bit of go, all right? Head back, sweetie. Wow, you made the 
really comes alive at five to seven thousand rpm oh goodness me what a buzz this car is so the gi yaris has been a huge success for toyota i mean i don't think they actually make any money on the cars i mean you know a car with carbon fiber roof for 30 grand they can't be making a lot on each car but it's a true halo product isn't it i mean if my children if they were learning to drive right now and needed to buy them their first car subconsciously i'd probably be quite attracted to the idea of getting them a little a little entry model yaris because you know I, this car is a cool thing to me now and I read something somewhere as well that they've sold hundreds of thousands of digital GI Yaris's on the Gran Turismo game. So it just goes to show that, you know, even the new generation, they're, they're captivated by this car. Not only all the car journalists and every single video on, on YouTube already about this car. Everybody loves it. Everyone's raving about it. But even kids as well, you know. And that will transcend to more young people buying entry-level Yaris's, won't it? which is what makes it so frustrating every time I think about that dreadful new rebadge Z4 that they put the legendary Supra name to. I mean, I could make a whole video moaning about how they just completely messed it up with that car. It hasn't even got rear seats. It's not a Supra. leads to more manufacturers focusing on making lightweight cars small compact lightweight cars i mean everything's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger but look make something small that's appealing and fun to drive there's a market out there it'd be so much nicer wouldn't it to have lighter weight smaller vehicles out on the road everything's just so big now serious question who's doing more damage to the environment the father of two he buys himself a gi yaris and has it for three years uses it with his two children on the school run or the father of two who buys himself a Tesla Model X, which literally weighs double what this weighs, and all the carbon footprint that goes into battery production and all the rest of it, and he drives that around for three years. Who's actually being more environmentally conscious? What's, what's, what's doing more damage to the environment? Let me know in the comments below. two plus twos that I featured on the channel and the boots not as bad as what people say I mean I was stuck in it for 15 minutes wasn't I oh what an idiot I complain about modern cars all the time but there's some cool things there are some cool things get rid of the old lane assist but having rev matching is actually a really cool little feature another thing I've heard about these cars is that it's really harshly dampened too much to live with day to day and yeah it is definitely a sports setup as you would expect for a rally car I think I could live with this. I've got over, see look, big pothole there. I could live with that. I don't think it's too bad at all. It's only when you hit something really nasty that you notice it. So why did the owner of this car, part exchange, his legendary dad car, the V12 Ferrari FF, why did he swap it for this? Basically, he drove it for a year with his family, took it on some trips, you know, really used the thing. And then as that year was coming to an end, and he inquired about extending the Ferrari warranty, they hiked the price right up. And then also consider that. <laughs> also consider that those Ferrari warranties, they don't cover everything. I mean, for example, if the reversing camera was to break, that's not covered. I mean, that cost you like £2,000 by the time you pay for labour. I mean, it just weighed everything up, you know, and sort of the way that the world's sort of going at the moment. And just thought, look, this, this might be a good time to sort of 
move on from the FF. And then the person who really wanted to buy his lovely spec FF, he offered him this and said, well, look, would you part exit with a GR Yaris? And that's the really important thing is that, so he wasn't necessarily looking for a GR Yaris, but the appeal of this car is such that he said yes. And I don't think he would have said yes if it was just any other hot hatch. That's the wonderful thing about the GR Yaris. It really is appealing. I mean, driving it right now, I can completely see why. I'd have one of these for six to 12 months. And then he's obviously gonna move on from this and get something else sort of like really exciting again. And sort of indirectly, what I think he's kind of done is really clever because he's he's gone from one massive extreme to the next, giving himself some real good contrast. So, you know, going from the FF to this, and then going from this to whatever is next is, you're really gonna appreciate it. But I think he's kind of accidentally done the right thing. You know, going from one extreme, I mean, what? So you've got an FF and what, put another 100,000 pounds in and get yourself a Lusso. But the actual contrast going from the FF to the Lusso, I don't think will be as big as going from the FF to this. And then from here back to something really crazy and extreme. So, so yeah, I think it's kind of happened upon the right thing to do. You know, you reach the, the pinnacle of large capacity engines and then, and then go for something just completely different, which is an absolute hoot to drive. I mean, this is fantastic. So yeah, I think he did the right thing. I need to say a massive thank you to this car's owner, Ben. Again, just been so lovely to me today. Let me take it out again to drive after we had the sound issues. I really appreciate it. And he's got two young children. And his car list is incredible. Living the dad car's dream. That's what it's all about. Thank you so much, Ben. So what would you like to see next on the dad car's channel? What do you want to see if you can fit child seats in the back? Let me know in the comments below. And if you've got an exciting dad car, please send me an email. So in summary then for the GR Yaris, I've always loved the idea of this car. And I can tell you today, driving it, it lives up to all the hype. Everything is right, this car is wonderful. And a dad car is all about having something which is exciting to own, exciting to drive, and that other people don't think you could use as a dad car. And you really can, these rear seats are very usable. And the boot's not as bad as people say either. But I tell you, if I was driving the soft play in my Aston Martin with my girls and I pulled up at the car park and then a GI Yaris pulled up next to me with a dad and got out with his children, and then a Ferrari Roma pulled up the other side of me with a dad and got out with some children, I would get out and go and shake both of their hands with equal admiration. <laughs> and obviously you know how much this car is compared to a Roma, so that's what makes it so special. I absolutely love it, it's a proper dad car. Look, thank you all so much for watching i really appreciate it please subscribe if you've already subscribed hit that bell icon and um, please like and share this video please share it every time someone shares a video it means the world to my little channel and i get a real boost but look i will see you all on the next one stick around after the credits because i'm going to um, i'm going to show some bloopers i've got a lot from this one and yeah look i'll see you guys soon bye bye Johnny Smith, have you still got your GR86? I would love to come and meet you, sit down, have a chat with you, ask you some questions about your memories of you with your children and your cars. I think people would love to see that. Okay, don't worry. It's very cold, isn't it? Okay, do you want to sit in the driver's seat? In the driver's seat. <laughs> Today's not going very well whatsoever. I just got back from driving with my little one in the back. I just checked the sound and it's all garbled. I don't know why. So the good news is it means that I get to drive this car again. <laughs> ben, where was the 360 footage for this video? There. I've really got to start doing this with the owner stood outside. Oh, this is ridiculous. It's actually not as bad as being in the back of the Taycan because the parcel shelf just like pushes up. So I can't fold the seats forward because they've got Isofix child seats on both sides. Right, I've got the key this time though. You can't open the boot from the key.